velocity banking scenario, I have a client here on the board. This is a gentleman that has a home equity line of credit, which is in the first position. Okay, we have a first position HELOC here. The primary goal, primary goal is to pay off as much debt as we possibly can by leveraging this debt tool. Okay, overall he has over 300,000 of debt. Current income is 6,200. This is his personal income. This is a gentleman that does real estate uh, investing, so he has real estate income. I did not include that because that money goes into a business, business checking account. So the cash flow from that side of the business, we're gonna actually gonna separate it. So when I'm working with clients, whether we're doing velocity banking on the business side or the personal, Typically, I separate it unless you have all your money going to the personal account or all your money going to a business, then it's just you know one house. In this case, 6,200 is on the personal side of his income. His current expenses to date, all right, so we're in September 2019, like the last week of the month, right? It's September 24th. Been talking to this gentleman for about a month or so now, and he's getting ready to implement the concept we got all our numbers down all right here's his current cash flow these are conservative numbers that i'm using in terms of uh the cash flow i, I we uh, went ahead and overestimated on expenses underestimated on cash flow so 1500 i also am overestimating the balance on his heloc because when you have a HELOC and the interest, it, it fluctuates from time to time as you go through the month when you're, you know, you're making payments on it. It's gonna go up and it's gonna go down. So we're starting off as if we're in October. All right, so that's how I'm gonna start this off. We still, I was communicating with him in September and we're still in September, but this is what the balance would look like if we did nothing until we actually started in October. So 163,000, $543.46 is the current balance owed on this first position HELOC and it's 164,000 so it's basically maxed out it's only like a thousand bucks in available credit interest rates 5% this HELOC is a principal and interest payments it's not an interest only it's principal and interest it's revolving simple interest okay it meets all the criteria unlimited transactions no issues there in terms of the debt tool. So it meets the criteria for velocity banking. I wanna direct our attention over here and I'm gonna show you some things that are going on in this particular scenario that I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of to expedite how the, the speed at which I pay off debt, right? So some things to know is first and foremost, he's got a fix and flip going on, I believe, so at the end of October, he's looking to profit about 27,000. All right, so we've got this about number, 27,000 in profit cash that we can put somewhere, right? And I'm gonna give some options on what we can do with that money in terms of paying off debt. His goal is to become debt free, so that's what we're focusing on. Another thing to know is we have a Chase credit card. The balance on it as of right now is $1,216.07. We have a 0% offer. So we've got two debt tools now. We've got the HELOC, and now we've got a Chase credit card. 0% till September 2020, right? So I have about, what, 11, that's a whole year, okay? Here's what we're gonna do to take advantage of this, is we're gonna shift expenses to this credit card so that I can temporarily increase my cash flow over here so that I can direct all my cash flow to the HELOC and reduce my interest costs. All right. So what we're going to do here is I, I got an estimate of certain bills that he has that we could, uh, you know, either pay for by the year or just pay them monthly running them through this 0% credit card for just a short period of time. All right, so that we can have more money go to the HELOC. So in this case, 145 bucks for the insurance monthly. We're gonna pay that for the whole entire year. 
He's got $180, I believe, towards uh, like utilities. Either he can pay it quarterly, I forgot, or if it's just monthly. So that's, that's going to be a monthly expense. He's running through the credit card. We've got a marching band expense, $445. So this is a one-time payment to pay off that expense. And my cash flow is going to go up $100. So it's gonna, we're going to add 100 to the fifteen seventeen. all right? And then the last two things, estimate is a cell phone bill and then like gas or food, miscellaneous, things like that. All I want to do over the next five months from October to about February 2020 is I want to run whatever bills I possibly can through that credit card up to 10000 That's it. Just up to 10K. Meanwhile, I'm going to be paying the minimum monthly payment on that credit card. That's it. So that, that's how we're going to be using the credit card here, shifting the expenses. When I do this, right, when I shift the expenses, it's not coming out of my income no more. So I'm going to be making my 6200 6200 each and every month. And now my expenses are no longer this number. Okay? My expenses from here drop somewhere a little over $800 a month okay, that I'm going to uh, have redirected in cash flow. The total number that I wrote in my notes was, let's see, $2,342.16 from fifteen seventeen that I'm going to be able to work with. All right? Very powerful. So I got more cash flow, less expenses. That means when I start dumping all my income, right? Because that's what we're doing here. We're going to be dumping all my income into his first position HELOC. Once I do that, now in terms of expenses coming out to pay my bills for the month, right? And this is where people get confused all the time. They're like, all right, Denzel, you want me to put all my money in and then how do I pay my bills, right? Uh, people get confused with that all the time. Look, it's a simple transfer. Okay, this HELOC is attached to a checking account at his bank. So he's simply going to transfer money the same day that I put money in. So whether you're someone that gets paid monthly, weekly, bi-weekly, whatever it is, you're able to see, okay, if I get paid weekly, that means four times a month, money's going into the line of credit. In terms of money coming out of your line of credit, what I usually do is I, uh, I look either from like paycheck to paycheck, or I might do every three to five days. The purpose behind that is I simply want to limit the amount of money that we're pulling out at once so that I could have more money sitting in this HELOC, lowering my interest rate. I mean, lowering my interest cost. So the 5%. I believe as of right now, his mortgage payment is around fifteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month, and of that fifteen, fourteen hundred, about six hundred plus dollars going towards interest, right? Each and every month with the with the HELOC. So to reduce that, we're actually going to be doing velocity banking on the debt tool. Why? Because we need to create space so that we can actually chunk at something at his other debts, because we've got other debts on the table here. So, the month of September, I'm not even gonna count it. I'm gonna let that be space, you know, a uh, uh, growth, I should say. So I'm gonna underestimate the actual results over the next five months, right? And then we're gonna see what this would actually look like in terms of uh, the balance, what it's gonna look like in about five months. So starting in October, income goes in, sheesh. Supposed to be 6,200. Look at that. Making mistakes already. I think I'm nervous because of the new space and whatnot, you know? But we're good here. So my expenses are now going to be 3,800. Let's see, 3,857. That's what I wrote. About. This is an overestimate. He could potentially run other bills through here, through the credit card up to 10K. Why 10K? It's, you know, just 50%. I don't really want to go more than that. Uh, I don't want to go too much in debt on the credit card. I don't want to be over utilizing my credit space, so to speak. Um, I just simply want to shift a couple of stuff, get my cash flow up. All right. So let's do some numbers here. Let's check this out. 
Now, what I'm not doing is I'm not factoring the interest costs, right? Because here's what's happening. The income, the 6,200 that goes in, right? Everything goes in. The expenses, this 3,857 is also including the actual, uh, the mortgage payment itself, right? I didn't include it here on purpose just to, just to uh, you know, have this, um, this space, so to speak. I just want to analyze the cash flow and the expenses that's coming out and going in. When you start dumping all your income into your debt tool, especially like a HELOC, a first position HELOC, understand that that following month, the payment is going to drastically lower. Your interest cost is going to lower. And now even less money is coming out. So I've got this initial overall expenses that I was working with. We shifted a bunch of bills to the credit card, increased our cash flow, and now I'm basically removing the payment itself on the HELOC. I don't really have a payment now because this 6200 is the payment each and every month that's going into the HELOC. So if that's the payment, that means more money is going towards the principal balance on the mortgage, okay? So let's take a look. If I got 163, 543, 46, minus the 6,200, balance goes down to 157, expenses come out, 3857, not all at once, over time, throughout the month, expenses coming out, right? Balance is at 161, okay? That's at the end of October, right? So from the beginning to the end, boom. So the expenses dropped by basically the cash flow, the new cash flow that I have, which is the, the 2342.16, all right? And we're gonna do it again. Expenses, income goes in, expenses come out, all right? 158, okay, this is now October, end of November, let's do it again. Income goes in, expenses come out. This is, this is the concept, people, this is it. All I'm doing is having all of my cash flow show up as principal. And because this, all this income's going in each and every month, it's drastically lowering my interest on the monthly payment itself. What's cool about the HELOC, unlike a regular traditional mortgage, is when I'm, when I'm chunking into a traditional mortgage, the payment stays the same. Payment stays the same. Well, with the, with the HELOC, the payment will change. And if the payment's changing, less interest, right? Same thing with the traditional mortgage as well, but the other major difference is that interest is amortized, whereas this interest is calculated daily, okay? So end of December, I'm at 156. Going into January, income goes in, expenses come out. We're looking good, all right? So that's January. Income goes in, expenses come out. Now we're at 151 February. So by February 2020, mind you, this is not including, I didn't include the actual mortgage, the, the, the HELOC payment itself, because that, that whole payment is staying in the HELOC, which is bringing the balance down as well. So that whole thing is staying in there. I'm just showing you what the income going in and then the other expenses coming out. So 151 is about what it looks like. This is enough room for me to make my next move in terms of what I want to chunk at. Now, mind you, I got a credit card over here at 0%, right? So that's sitting there. I'm just paying the minimum on that. I'm getting cash back rewards by swiping the card. So I still have plenty of time before that interest rate expires, all right? So... In terms of this gentleman here, we have a couple of things. We have, we have a couple of debts. We've got a couple of different credit cards that I want to wipe out come February 2020, right? So 
Worst case scenario, this is what the balance is going to look like come February 2020. Now, if I went ahead and assumed what the mortgage payment would look like throughout these five months because it's going to be like changing for him. So I, I'm going to overestimate and say it's a 1400 because his last statement that he sent me was 1533.96 was his mortgage payment and about 600 plus dollars of that went towards interest. It's a 5% first position HELOC. Okay. So if I shifted about eight, 900 bucks of expenses there, and then in terms of expenses coming out, the number is now I have to minus 38. My mom's texting me. She's like, love the shirt. Love you too, mom. Love you too. Look what we're doing here. It's amazing looking at, looking at your son doing all this stuff. Isn't this so cool? God bless, right? Just, you know, giving gifts. So 38.57 minus the mortgage payment. So in reality, what's actually coming out of the HELOC, and this is what I was doing with my client. I was showing him each and everything that's coming out of the HELOC each and every month. What's actually coming out is 2,457, about, maybe a little more, could be a little less, but on average, instead of my expenses being 3857 coming out of the HELOC, right? Because you still have the expense of the, the monthly HELOC payment, but it's getting satisfied each and every month when you dump the income in. So that money is being used twice. Same money. Income pays the HELOC, which pays the payment, and then I turn around and use that same money to take my other living expenses, debt payments out to keep going. And then 100% of my cash flow becomes principal. Unlike if I was to, you know, if I was to do debt snowball, I make 6,200, my leftover is 1517 out of my 4682, you got the mortgage payment, right? So you pay the mortgage. If you're going to do debt snowball, you're just paying it. And then at the end of the month, you make an extra payment of 1517. Doing it that way, not all of this is gonna go towards um, principal. It'll be an extra payment, right? But depending on how your mortgage payment is set up, hey, they might hold that payment, number one. They might roll it over to the following month, or it might just be, um, you know, it'll be a, a portion of that money is going towards principal and interest. And then in terms of the interest that you pay off on the back end of that mortgage, you know, in terms of like, you know, you start off with a 30 year or 25, 35 year, whatever your initial timeline was, when you're just making extra payments per month, you're not exactly doing a whole lot of damage on the back end. You are doing damage, no, no doubt. Problem is the money goes away, it disappears. You can't use it again, right, as effectively. But if I'm dumping all your income in, all of that money is now, you're, you're, like re, you're like doing the math all over again. You, the, the, the company has to recalculate the math each and every time and then calculate your new interest and then shave a bunch of interest off the back end. Sounds confusing. I'm confusing myself. But this stuff is really, really cool when you start... <laughs> When you really start uh, like putting the pieces together, you're like, okay, okay, I think I can do this, all right? So if my expenses are 2,457, that's coming out of the HELOC, that means more money is staying in, right? Um, so we, I'm gonna restart the numbers again as if I was in October, even though we're in September right now, acting as if I'm in October, new income going in, Expenses now coming out, two, four, five, seven. Now that balance originally was, uh, I think of the numbers before was like 160 something. Now we're at 159, right? And then if you're wondering about, oh, Denzel, well, how does the, uh, 
you're not, you're not calculating the interest. The only reason why I'm not calculating the interest is because I created that space already. I already created the space. So whatever numbers I get, when I get to February 2020, when I'm ready to make that next chunk, I'm already factoring in whatever the, the cost is going to be. So whatever the number I get to, it's going to be higher than what the actual result is when, this, when my client actually starts doing it. Okay. So 159,800, right? And here's how I get my range. I'm factoring in unexpected expenses, emergencies, the kid's birthday, wife birthday, Christmas. All that is being factored in when I'm running your numbers, when we work together one-on-one. -on -one. That's another, you know, thing that I think a lot of people, you know, ask is, hey, you know, what? I dump all my income in and then what do I do when I want to, you know, go out or when I want to go on vacation or something? I'm like... I got you, Papo. I got you. Um, we, we, we figure this out together. Together. Okay, so income goes in. This is uh, end of October. That's what? 30 day window. Okay, 159. Let me just redo that again. 159, 800 minus 62. Income, expenses coming out. 156. Okay, do it again. 152. Look how much faster I'm going. This is when your whole payment becomes like basically principal. And my interest cost drops dramatically. Okay, 148. So that's November, December, January. By the end of February or sooner, my balance on the HELOC should be anywhere from 144K to about 150K, okay? So that's my range. With that range, now I can do some damage, okay? I'm look at his other debts here. Here's what we got. We have a Venture Capital One credit card, originally in September, owed seven grand, we got a, a Flagstar credit card. We got another Fifth Third Bank. We got Wells Fargo, American Express, a bunch of different credit cards, right? Now, let me see something here. I wanna make sure I get my numbers right so I don't confuse you guys, right? So when I approach February 2020, whatever the balance is, it's gonna be somewhere around 144 to 150k. That's enough available credit from 164 for me to make a move. Okay? I want to increase cash flow. My primary objective is I want to send all my money to the income. I want to pay off all the other little debts that he has and then work on the big guy later. Right? So I don't mind paying the interest over here to save interest on credit cards that are charging me like 20 plus percent. What Velocity Banking is somewhat doing is like debt consolidation, but in a more effective way in terms of how you pay things. All I'm doing is shifting how you pay your bills, okay? So we've got, what we're gonna do February 2020 for this gentleman is we're gonna pay off Venture Capital, Key Bank, Fifth Third Bank, and Wells Fargo for a positive, cash flow gain of 534 okay on top of the 1617 cash flow that's the true cash flow this is shifted cash flow right so these 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 things are, are bills that he's going to keep paying even after he's debt free so all i'm doing for from now to september 20 is just holding off i'm not exactly going to pay it off yet when i do go to pay it off i'm going to have plenty of money to do so because it was expenses, money that was already coming out anyways. All I did was defer the payments out a little bit so I could have more money coming here, okay? So that's all I wanna do, okay? That's all I wanna do there. So by February 2020, I pay off four debts from October to February. I wiped out 
I don't know, do the math, 163 from anywhere from 144 to 150, right? And then in terms of uh, what we wipe out on the uh, leveraged, on the other credit card debts, that's another good, I want to say, 10 plus thousand, 10 plus thousand, not bad at all, okay? So this is what I like to do all day long. Just wanted to show you guys, give you guys an idea of what we're going to be doing on my Velocity Banking Masterclass coming up November. All I'm going to do is a bunch of live streams, private, for all the people that signed up. If you haven't signed up, you haven't enrolled yet, get yourself together, figure out your finances, let's make a move so that you can invest in yourself, start doing Velocity Banking, work with me, I'm going to put your numbers on the board, get to ask me any questions you like before we get this thing started. So, 